guest first appeared on the show, he made quite an impression, partly due to the fact that he was dressed in a toga, but also due to his extraordinary ability to cope with just about everything we threw at him. How will he fare tonight? Let's find out when we welcome back the incomparable Frank Woodley. <laughs> So, before you put on the costume, what were you thinking? Was this part? Well, of I must admit, I'm starting to think that I'm, I'm probably not going to be going. Whoa, the power <laughs> and the passion. Okay. I'm starting to think it's a different direction. It's a different direction. <laughs> now the door is there. Wait till you centre yourself, because okay. I know how you work. <clears throat> Frank Woodley, the door is yours. Thanks, Shane. Thank God you're here, Master. Ah, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> because I am always glad for the master of the way. <laughs> always has a happy heart. <laughs> Even once, I got a pimple on the inside of my buttocks. And when I walked, it would rub and rub. But that did not deter me from the center of the way. Master, you have broken your vow of silence after 10 years. Why now? I think, I think it's because it was really starting to shit me. <laughs> after 10 years? And, you know, that's a long time. Huh? Master, we yes. need to know. You spent 10 years in, mm. in a cave by oh, yourself. Yep. What truths have you un uncovered? Ah, I have learnt that a man should never, should never hold his nose when he sneezes. For if you do this, my children, your eyes pop out of your head. And it's hard to get them back in because you can't see. Master. Yes. What did you eat? Oh, I ate my own skin. <laughs> that flaked off. And I would collect it in a small porcelain bowl. And I would have a party. <laughs> I went a bit Indian then. <laughs> that is because I have traveled the seven moons and everywhere, and that is why I sometimes go German. <laughs> you have you have gathered wisdom from all around the world. I was ten years in a cave! No, no. For God's sake! <laughs> ten years! You once told us many years ago that a, an apple is harder than a stone but softer than a feather. Did I say that? Yes, Master. <laughs> That's good. What did it mean? That means that all things have a beauty, but all things indeed have an ugliness. You must understand the paradoxes of this world. Don't try to eat a stone. You'll, it'll hurt. <laughs> and don't ever try to throw a feather at someone in anger, for they will look at you and just go, well, what are you doing? <laughs> but that is for others, not us. We must, must turn within. Master, lead us in a prayer. Okie dokie. <laughs> The Great Wall of China. In Tibetan, Master, if we may. <laughs> you have learned much, my son, but you have not learned to not be a smart ass. <laughs> Prepare. Ah! Oh, master! You have returned! Who are you? Han Sing, your warrior nemesis! Ah, Han Sing. Son of Hungwell. <laughs> I have question. Are you ready to die? I am ready to die for I have no fear of death because I have become one with the way. Bring it on, baby. <laughs> Prepare to die. The master laughs at death. <laughs> 
And then I will channel the way of the angry worm. Gah! That didn't hurt as much as I was hoping. <laughs> Fantastic, Frank. Very, very, very enlightening, in fact. Tom, what do you think? Frank, you took us on a journey with a set of... <laughs> a set of philosophical teachings that deserve their own desk calendar and possibly the most disturbing facial hair since Rove attempted his moustache. <laughs> but you pulled it off beautifully. Once again, Master, a masterful display of thinking on your feet. Well done. <laughs>